God, source of all light, by your word, you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that our hearts and minds may be opened to know your truth and your way. Amen. Please be seated as I hand the time over to Eunice. Good morning, church. So we are currently in Stewardship Month, which is a period in our church calendar where we are reminded that all that we have is from God and we are merely stewards of it. We are just managers of these resources and riches that God has given to us and we are not the true owners of it. So Stewardship Month is also a period of time where we as a church, we prayerfully contemplate how we are going to give to support the um, to support the church through our financial giving in the year ahead. And talking about stewardship and giving, right, I'm just reminded of these two really very random encounters that I had recently. I was just shopping around and I started talking to the salespeople and somehow the conversation went to the point that I was sharing with them that I work in a church. And the first question that they asked me was, oh, you Christian, means you have to give 10% of your money to church, is it? And when I heard that, I was just stunned. I really did not expect anyone to ask me that kind of question when I tell people that I work in church. My expectation had been like, oh, you work in church? How come you choose to work in church? Or you work in church? Is it volunteer job or not? Right? But if you think about it, right, it's actually a very good question. And sometimes even we as Christians, we have such a thought in our, heart, in our heads as well. Why do we give our hard-earned money to the church? We work so many hours a week, sometimes at the expense of our family and our own health for our paycheck. Some of us here, we may not even have a regular paycheck, while others of us, we may have to rely on our savings or on our family to support us. So why? Why should we give to the church? And of course, the Bible has many answers and many perspectives to this question. But in our current sermon series, we focus on how, as we give, we grow as disciples of Christ. So Pastor Tsui covered on how giving helps us to grow in humility, while Pastor Ben dived into how giving means to grow our contentment. And today, we continue to look at another way of how giving grows us. When we give, we can grow in our faith because we trust God to supply all our needs. And so we read from, first, from Corinthians verse, chapter 4, verse 19 today. And we see Paul writing to the Philippian church saying, And my God will supply all my needs, every need of yours, according to his glory in riches in Christ Jesus. And this is such an amazing and encouraging passage, isn't it? God will provide for all our needs. He is our provider. And it's even more amazing and comforting when we read this passage in its context. You see, when Paul was writing this letter to the Philippian church, he was in prison. And the Philippians, seeing his plight, were filled with concern for him. And so they gave a monetary gift to support him. And on the surface, this sounds quite normal, right? I mean, most of us here, I believe, if we know of someone who's struggling, we see someone in need, we will offer help and support to them in one way or another, especially if we have the means to do so. But in the case of the Philippian church, they were really, really poor. We see in 2 Corinthians 8 too, that the Philippian church, which is part of the Macedonian church, was in a severe test of affliction and experiencing extreme poverty. Yet, despite their situation of lack and of difficulty, they still gave financially to Paul to support him. And Paul was likely more than aware of the financial state of the Philippian church and how they were struggling. And so he wrote a letter to them to encourage and to affirm them. And that's where we get the letter of Philippians. You know, he wrote to them to tell them that God will also provide for them. And reading this passage in the NLT version gives us a slightly better understanding of the magnitude of provision that the Philippians can expect to receive from God. They can expect to receive from God's glorious riches. And God's glorious riches refer to His resources that are unlimited, that are infinite and far beyond anything that we can even imagine. 
And so when God supplies our needs, He doesn't just do the bare minimum, but He gives us abundantly and lavishly. And this is also not the first time that the Philippian church had given materially to Paul. And their experience of God's abundant provision when they gave to Paul previously helped them to grow in their faith of God as their provider. And as they grew in their faith and their knowledge of God as a provider, it would have helped them to give once again. And that is the first lesson we can learn from this passage. That like the Philippian church, as we give, we can grow in faith because we trust that God will provide abundantly for all our material needs. We can be assured that God will meet our every need no matter how large, how desperate, or how hopeless we may feel about it. And whether it's by a supernatural means or through the people around us, God will provide for us. And even when we think that, you know, oh no, I have so little, I'm very tempted to keep whatever money I have for myself, just in case. We can grow in faith when we continue to practice giving despite all of that. We grow in faith because we can trust that God is our provider. He will provide for our material needs when the need arises. And so recently, I had a lot of financial commitments that have been stressing me out. It's been so bad that I'll wake up in the middle of the night thinking about my finances. Do I have enough to pay for this? How am I going to cut my spending so that I have enough funds for that other thing? And honestly speaking, I have then considered to maybe not give my tithe and my offerings anymore to help to ease my financial commitments. And as I was preparing for this sermon, right, I was reminded of how God has always been so faithful in providing for me each time and that I ought to remain remain steadfast in my faith knowing that God is my provider. Because you see, before coming on board as a full-time staff in TPMC, I was working in a social service agency. And for those of you who may know, right, The pay in a social service agency, especially the starting pay, right, is not particularly high. And at the same time, I was also serving actively in the youth ministry. And part of the ministry requires us to spend time with the youths, to just be there with them, listen to them, care for them. And every so often, I would then treat the youths to a meal or give them a little gift to encourage them in their season. And I do all of this out of my own pocket even though my pay wasn't high. And so I've had people close to me asking me, hey Eunice, your pay isn't high. Why do you do this? And yet in all of this, I never experienced any lack. Granted, there were months where, you know, finances were a little bit tighter, but I never experienced lack because God always provided for all of my needs. Sometimes it will be because someone unexpectedly brings me out for a meal And others, it will be the timely provision of money that I need. And this is just one of many, many times where I've seen God's provision in my life. In fact, even in my current financial commitments, right, I've really seen God being so, so faithful. I shared just now that I've been very stressed about it, right? But in the past one, two weeks, some stuff just happened that helped me to ease a lot of my stress and made me realise that, A, actually my financial commitments are not that bad because God has provided for me. And I'm sure that, you know, this is a story, an experience that many of us here can relate to, that as we give in faith to the church through our offerings, through our tithings and our pledges, God always provides for our needs and He never leaves us in lack. And as we experience God's provision personally, our faith also grows And the words of Philippians 4.19 are no longer just words in the Bible. They become a personal experience and truth that all of us can live out in confidence. But with that being said, it also doesn't mean that we can think that, oh, if I give $1 to church, God will give me back $10. That is wrong. While we say that God will provide abundantly for our material needs, we should not take our giving as a get-rich-quick scheme. We should not expect God to give us back with interest because that falls into the trap of the prosperity gospel, which is a wrong teaching of the Bible. Those people who believe in the prosperity gospel believe that by giving financially, they can reap more blessings and they become richer. But that is highly problematic, my friends. 
it's important that we note that this passage reads that God will supply all our needs. There is a difference between our needs and our wants and our luxuries. Throughout the Bible, right, there is no such teaching that tells us that believers will never suffer or never struggle anymore and all of them will become financially rich. On the contrary, what we see in the Bible is that there are so many faithful disciples of Christ who still suffer, such as the Philippian church and even Paul from today's passage. So if the prosperity gospel were truly to be real, then none of us as Christians, we would be living in poverty. Yet in our current world, we still have so many of our brothers and sisters in Christ living in poverty in Latin America, in Africa, and even here in Asia. In fact, some of us within our midst here may also be struggling financially. Yet, we would never say that their poverty and their struggle is a lack of faith or a flawed faith on their part, right? So then what is a more accurate understanding of what Paul means when he writes that my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. Paul was reminding and reassuring the Philippian church of the faithfulness of God who is able to supply all their needs just as he has supplied for the material needs of, the, of Paul. It means to trust and to have faith that God will indeed provide for them and as they seek and serve him. I know that all of us here, we want to avoid pain, we want to avoid discomfort, but there is a difference between our wants and our needs. We may not get all that we want, but there is the confidence that all of us can have that God will provide all that we need. And Philippians 4 9 is not a promise that we will escape our poverty, that we will escape our suffering, but it is a po- promise that God will provide for all our needs to help us to manage amidst the poverty amidst the suffering that we may be experiencing. Not just in terms of finances or material needs, but for every aspect of our life. And while sometimes the the use of the word will in this sentence indicates an unknown time in the future, and oftentimes waiting is really a struggle. It's so hard to wait upon the future. Yet, we can grow in faith knowing that when God gives, when God provides, it will always be on time and that it will meet our needs. As we give, we grow in faith, knowing that God will provide for all our needs in a timely manner. And so, brothers and sisters, as Christians, we first receive riches, whether material, emotional, or spiritual riches, according to our need, because we are children of God. And as such, we are able to give in faith, knowing that God gives, that He is our provider. And therefore, when we give, we can help to build the faith of those around us as well. You see, the Philippians first experienced God's giving to them when he gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for them, even though they were so undeserving of it. And because they had already experienced God's giving, they were then able to give to Paul despite their situation of lack, knowing that God gave to them first. Their faith in God allowed for them to then give to others. And the faith of the Philippian church in their giving, Paul was able to experience God's provision for himself as well in a period of trial and tribulation. And therefore, he was able to then grow in his faith of God as his provider. And God is not just a God who provides for us materially, right? He's the one who provides for our social economic needs, uh, social economic social emotional needs as well as our spiritual needs. The gifts of the Philippian church was a demonstration and an outflow of God's faithfulness and how God is at work in the Philippian church as they live out the gospel in their life and in their ministry. And through the Philippians' faithfulness and obedience, despite their hardship, Paul could see God at work in them, guiding them towards Christ's likeness. And then encourage Paul as well to show him that his giving to the lives of the Philippians was not in vain, but it bore fruits of faithfulness. And this cycle of giving in faith to build the faith of others didn't just end with the Philippian church. From the early church all the way until present day, there are so many stories of how, you know, 
people, Christians, give in faith in such a way that the faith of others are stirred. The early church faced much persecution from the state and from the people around them. And at a council meeting for bishops in 325 AD, a majority of the 300 plus in attendance bore scars of persecution for their faith. They had missing limbs, eyes that were dug out, hands that were burned so badly that they could not use their hands anymore. Yet, all these people, they still persevered in their faith, in the giving of themselves to build up the church, to ensure that God's word is still preached through the generations, all the way until us, right here, right now. And without the giving of the early church, even at the expense of themselves, there is a chance that the church wouldn't exist today, that we would not be here worshipping together as a church. The cycle of giving in faith to build the faith of others continues. A couple years ago, I heard of this small church in Singapore that was undergoing redevelopment in the 90s. Resources were tight for many of the worshippers, but the church was in urgent need of rebuilding. And so, the members of the church would come together every week and pray for God's provision. And while finances were tight, they would still give to the church to the rebuilding of the church, knowing that God will provide for them and for their church. And so every week, they will have just enough money to pay for the works that had been done the week before. And, you know, because of their faith-filled giving, the members of the church grew in their faith and experienced God in their provider. The church was also then able to expand their ministry work to reach out to more people including starting a social service agency to serve the community needs, allowing more people to know Christ and eventually come to faith. And closer to home, right here in this church, there are also so many individuals who give in faith, even though they have many other commitments with their time and their money. We have members who say, I can't give much to the church, but what I can, when I can, I will give. You know, we have individuals who sponsor activities, logistics and food during youth camp to bless our youth and enable our youth from less privileged backgrounds to come for youth camp without having to worry too much about the financial cost of it. Others contribute financially to the block blessing to enable us to continue to reach out to the neighbours in Topayo. And slowly but surely, we are seeing the fruit of the labour, the fruit of this giving such that then our neighbours, they are being a bit more open to our church. They are willing to come in. They are willing to talk to us as well. And even in our homebound ministry, we have homebound seniors who are still faithfully giving to the church each month, even though they are not working, even though they must bear the cost of their own living expenses and medical cost. And the common point in all of these stories is that every single one of them from the early church all the way to today, all gave in faith, knowing that God, in His infinite riches, will provide for all their needs, whether it's a material need, emotional need, or spiritual need, as they give. And in doing so, many others are then led to encounter and experience God and grow in their faith. So as we reflect on today's sermon in light of stewardship months and hearing so many sermons about giving, I wonder if there are areas in our life where we are seeking God's provision. How do I give when I am in between jobs and finances are tight? I have my children's education to pay for, my parents' health care bills, I'm juggling between work, parenting, taking care of my elderly parents, as well as my own personal needs. I don't have the time or the money to give to the church. But friends, I pray that you take encouragement and hope from today's sermon, that as you give, God will provide for you according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Would you then take that leap of faith in God's promises and in doing so obediently, regardless your circumstances, grow in your faith and point other people towards faith as well. In the knowledge of God who provides for you, both materially and spiritually, to sustain you through all the seasons of your life. You know, our giving doesn't necessarily have to be in big, big ways, but it can also be in the small ways. 
I know some of us here may feel the struggle and the pinch in giving to God. But as God first gave to us, let us take the step of obedience, practice giving, and grow in our faith as we see God providing for us. For some, this action step may be just to fill up our pledge card and drop it in the box in front after service as, our, as a show of our commitment, as a show of our faith. The focus really isn't in the amounts. It could be $5 a week. It could be $500 a week. But what is more important is that we exercise our faith and we grow our faith muscle as we give, resting firm in the assurance that God will provide for us. And for those of us who have already dropped off our pledge cards last week, maybe the next step could be to set up our standing instructions for regular payments or to rework your budget for each week or each month and commit to that budget. This pledge month, will we pause to consider how we as individuals and as a church have grown in faith as we have given over the years and learn to continue giving in faith, knowing that God will provide for all our needs, that our faith as a church will grow and will be strengthened to the glory of God, our Father. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, from whom we have received all good things, thank you for your abundant love for us, that we experience your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you that in you we have no lack, for you are our provider. Holy Spirit, help us to live out this truth through our giving, that we may grow in our faith as we commit ourselves and our finances to growing your ministry here in this church. Teach us to give as you first did, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.